Pittsburgh and Allegheny County has a real um, need as they're in a crisis when it comes to the the, the number of units of affordable housing that, that, that are needed. Because, you know, there's really the sense of the families like mine or the families like my neighbors that I grew up with, they can't access housing in this neighborhood any longer. For generations and generations, the people of these neighborhoods have been told that, you know, the, the neighborhood has no value and is in a, you know, is not a, a healthy environment. Conservation land trusts um, do what they say they do. They pres preserve land for conservation value in perpetuity. Community Land Trust is looking at affordable housing as the first priority of what they will do in the future, but they're also looking at how to protect land for urban agriculture opportunities or community gardens. So a community land trust would acquire the land, just like a conservation land trust would, but a community land trust would then have a home built on that land uh, and then make that, um, make that home affordable in per perpetuity. Um, the players around the table are very locally based on purpose because these decisions have to take place at the local level and they're very diverse because of the, of the diverse nature uh, and benefits that a community land trust can, can provide to communities. And a perfect example of that is Homewood or Larimer where they've been disinvested and need that type of investment um, over the years and Lawrenceville where they've seen the investment and now they're saying, well, we don't have any affordability in our community. What are we going to do about that? And so, so all these communities have come together and said, well, community land trust may be good for our community regardless of what situation we're in. So Lawrenceville in 2000 didn't have one home uh, that was appraised at over $100,000. Uh, last year, our high water mark for residential single family houses uh, sold for $568,000. Um, so you're looking at over a 500% increase in in that top of the market, that top value, uh, in a pretty short window, you know, you're talking 15 years. Um, so what we're really seeing, you know, in a lot of other neighborhoods, I think could, could echo this, of there is a significant gap in the market for families at the median income. You know, you're looking at an average rent in those new developments of, it's based on per square foot, that's how they kind of term it, so $2 a square foot which means a 1,000 square foot, two bedroom apartment will rent for $2,000 a month. Um, that isn't affordable to a large swath of Lawrenceville population, also Pittsburgh's population right now. Um, so I think we're hopeful that the land trust, um, it's not gonna be the panacea, but it's gonna be a new tool uh, in the toolbox to create and preserve affordable housing in the neighborhood. You know, there are neighborhoods like Homewood throughout the country um, that go through similar things that are designed the same way. So again, it goes back to the lack of power that a lot of people in these neighborhoods, they're not able to define when and where value happens. You know, what is the common denominator that sets the tone? And in all these neighborhoods, there's a lack of ownership. So, you know, the, what gets people thinking about ownership and it's the actual thought process of critical thinking. So then it's a lack of critical thinking. And you know, when we peel back the other layer, there's really this lack of breathing room. So you see that a lot where it's like, well, I can't get into that critical thinking mode because I can't even think about buying a house right now. I can't buy that, even though that lot's $500, that's not even on my radar because I'm trying to figure out how I feed my kids tomorrow. Well, it was beautiful when I was young, but as I got older, I seen families start breaking up. 
and the streets took a turn for the worse. It was just lack of knowledge for the new generation that was coming up. Starting last year in 2015, drastic change, drastic change, and that's just from a lack of knowledge that we don't really know. We don't have a full home to start with anymore. There's people around, you know, even around East Liberty. Rent is rising, especially out here. And so, you know, we're trying to adapt to that. Everyone has that business man, mindset as far as out here. You know, they're getting ready for the changes that's coming. So, you know, they're doing things to create more business, to create more income, so they can be prepared for when that rise comes. In Homewood, there's a lot of abandoned houses, a lot. Now, if they can tear those down and instead of doing nothing with them, turn it into a green space, that'll be perfect because that'll bring more change. You know, people will be more susceptible to that. I, I sit on the board of the Community Land Trust as, as, um, as the representative from the Allegheny Land Trust. Let's start out by saying that the Community Land Trust was uh, kindly broadly um, visioned of, of providing services to primarily the city of Pittsburgh and First Ring suburbs, but also all of Allegheny County uh, moving forward. And so we help local people save local land is what our motto is. And uh, uh, we do that every day by working with communities and elected officials and, and community leaders to identify the right pieces of land and to um, do what we can to acquire that land. So we own uh, four properties on 5200 block of Duncan Street and they will most likely be the first CLT homes in the city of Pittsburgh, which is really exciting for us to be able to kind of uh, pilot uh, this new tool. We're hopeful, I think as an organization, that um, we can hopefully be uh, um, sort of a test bed for this, for this idea. Um, you, know, we you know, these neighborhoods have to own, control and develop their own economies. You know, they got to have their own businesses, they got to hire their own people, and then the people that they hire got to take their paychecks and, and, and buy in the same economy. You know, because you know, people that are only making sixteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year, they're not saving money. Every single dime is going back into the economy. So then it's a question of which economy. The Community Land Trust would be almost like a spokesperson that could start laying the groundwork with these different communities that may be interested in creating a land trust for themselves. Because again, our job is to be the umbrella group and provide like a general um, capacity for individual community land trusts within neighborhoods that may not have the capacity or we don't want to duplicate services that we might be able to do at the top level. So hopefully we get a spokesperson go around start building up those relationships, get people excited and educated on what a community land trust is and how that could be a resource and a tool to drive, again, you know, some of these breathing room activities uh, for these neighborhoods. And, and we're not saying that community land trust is the end-all, be-all, and the solution for everybody, but it is, it is a tool in the toolbox that, um, if implemented the correct way, and if it has local, um, uh, local control and local um, buy-in and, and, and decision-making ability, um, it could be successful for years to come. Thank you.